and welcome to another episode of CUP TV. My name is Anne Smith and today I'm going to be looking at some of the different file formats that cutting machines use and also the software that is required to use them. I'm using one of my simple Christmas designs to demonstrate for you. My original file is for an A5 size card, so I'm going to take a look at how to open it, how to resize it using Make the Cut, Sure Cuts a Lot and Studio. The reason for this is simple. When I first started using my Silhouette SD, I thought that the only software that I could use was Studio. Recently, I discovered that I do have other choices. So, let's move on and take a look at what we've got on the computer. If you go to the file menu and scroll down to open, you will see that the only file format that Make the Cut will open is Make the Cut. Go back to the file menu and scroll down to import. Select the type of file that you wish to open and then select the folder containing your file. Today I am working with PDF and SVG files to try to show you some of the differences between them. Firstly, I am going to change my page orientation from landscape to portrait. You can see here that the PDF file will open at full size. Because I want to make an A6 card, I need to reduce the size. Then, if I click and hold one of the corner arrows, I can reduce the size as much or as little as I want to. Both shapes are still linked at the moment, so this will retain the proportions correctly. If you look at the bottom left of your screen, you will see the fifth tab says Split, and this will split a selected group of shapes. If you click on one shape, you can move it independently from the other. You need to ensure that you only have the shapes that you actually want to cut on the screen. The easiest way to do this is to put each shape into its own layer. To do this, look at the right hand side of the screen. Look to the bottom of the layer box. Look at the third tab from the left. If you hover your mouse, you will see Layer Options menu. Click on this and choose to each its own. Now you will see that you have two layers with one shape in each. If you click on the open eye of one of the layers, that layer will disappear from your cutting mat. Click on the closed eye and it will reappear. All you have to do is hide or reveal your layers as appropriate when you are cutting your design. The first time you use Make the Cut, you will need to visit the website to download the correct driver file for your cutter. They aren't included in the software as standard. When you are importing, you can also use the shortcut button at the top of your screen if you prefer. When you are opening an SVG file, you will see that there is a small tick box below the preview panel. If you tick this, the file will import at actual size. If you don't tick it, you will have to enlarge the shapes to the size you require. Another difference between importing SVG and PDF files is that the SVG shapes will not be grouped together. All you need to do is to put each one into its own layer. Make sure you select all the shapes before you resize them. Now all you need to do is to cut your shapes.
There are just a few differences when opening fire with shortcuts a lot. First I'm going to import my SVG file. I'm going to zoom out so it's easier to see what I'm doing. I have resized my card using the selection tool and the resizing arrows. Some of these arrows will rotate your objects, others will resize them. The easiest thing is to have a play and see what happens with each one. At the moment both of my shapes are still grouped together. If I go to the object menu and scroll down to ungroup they will automatically be placed into their own layer. This can be seen on the bottom right of the screen. Click on the eye to activate each layer as required and move to a suitable position on your cutting mat. To cut, go to the cutter menu at the top of the screen, scroll to my cutter and select your cutting machine. Now go back into the cutter menu and select cut. This time I am importing my PDF file. When I open a file in shortcuts a lot, I find it quite difficult to see on the mat if it is just an outline so I use the fill option to put a colour in just to make it a little bit easier to see. Just select the shape that you want to fill. Choose colour in the fill option in the appearance box. To change the colour just click on the coloured box next to your fill option and choose whichever colour you want. Because I have already selected my cutting machine, I can go straight to the cut option in the cutter menu to bring up the cut dialog box. I just adjust my settings to suit my cardstock. I also have a cut preview and I can see that my card is slightly too big for my cardstock, so I'm going to make a few adjustments before I finally send the file to cut. In Studio Software, you need to choose the file type that you wish to open in the drop-down selection box. I'm going to open a DXF file. The first thing you will notice is that the file has imported at a smaller size than my original A5. Both pieces are also linked together, but if you look at the Ungroup button at the bottom left of the screen, you will see that they aren't grouped. To separate them, I have to go to the object menu and scroll down to the Release Compound Path. This will separate everything. So next, I need to group all the wording with my card base to maintain the correct position. I can now save that as a studio file. Next I'm going to open my GSD file. Because the two parts of this card have been saved as separate files, before I can try to resize them I need to copy and paste them into one file. Once again I find it easier to see what I'm doing by using a fill colour. This time I just select the shape and click on the colour that I want it to be. Now I can align both sections and resize them to fit my requirements. I can save my changes into a studio file. This time I want to make an A6 card. If I know the exact dimensions that I wish my card to be, I can use the scale menu at the top right of the screen. Because I want to resize both pieces, I have to group them together first before this option will work. Also, in order to maintain my original proportions, I need to tick the lock aspect ratio box. 
You can see here what will happen if I don't lock the aspect ratio first. Once I am satisfied with the size of my card, I can ungroup both pieces so I can lay them out on the mat ready to cut. In my examples, I have used some very simple embellishments, the spiral flower from my last episode and some holly leaves from another cutting file. I just added a big bow and a few gold beads to give a variety of different effects. I do hope that you have learnt as much as I have as I explore these three lots of different software. I hope you will join me next time as I take a look at a black cat cutter and fun time software.